If you've been waking up tired, dragging through your day, or wondering why you can't seem to stay focused or motivated, I want you to hear this very clearly. You're likely not lazy. You're not broken. You're likely running on a system that isn't firing properly. Oftentimes, it's not a willpower issue. It's a metabolic one. We live in a world where most people think that low energy just means to try harder, more caffeine, a new fancy planner, or another 5 a.m. routine. But what if I told you that your energy, your focus, and even your motivation depend more on how your body processes fuel than on how disciplined that you are. This video is going to break that down step by step. The science, the lived experiences, the exact habits that rebuild metabolic strength from the ground up so you can actually feel clear, capable, and in control again. Let's get one thing straight first. When I say metabolic health, I'm not just talking about your weight, not even just solely your blood sugar or your insulin, although those are huge pieces of the puzzle. Metabolic health is how efficiently your body takes in food, oxygen, and nutrients and turns them into energy. It's the foundation for so much in your body. Your focus, your mood, your drive, and your ability to recover. When that system slows down, you feel it everywhere. Not as pain like a lot of symptoms that you think of, but as the kind of fog that just seeps into every aspect of your life. I have a feeling you can relate to this. You start to lose your edge, your motivation dips, and even small tasks start to feel heavy. Now, I do respect your time, so let's dive straight into this. So what's actually going on when your energy tanks? Here are the three biggest culprits that I see. Even in people who eat clean, train hard, and do everything right. Number one, blood sugar instability. Now, I know I said it wasn't just about this, but I said the word just about this for a reason because there are other factors here, but this is a big part of it. Most people eat in a way that sends their blood sugar on a roller coaster. They get a huge spike in the morning with a high carb breakfast and then they crash by mid morning. Then you grab something sweet or caffeinated to recover and crash again. The instability doesn't just wreck your energy, it blurs your mental clarity, it raises your cortisol inappropriate. Appropriately, and it trains your body to depend on constant stimulation just to feel normal. That isn't a baseline status of how humans were meant to feel and perform. That mid-morning and midday slump, I know that we've coined that as a normal thing in our society, but it's not. The next biggest thing I see are nutrient gaps. Magnesium, B12, iron, CoQ10, more things than that, but these aren't optional. These are the building blocks and spark plugs of your metabolism. Without them, your cells can't turn food into fuel efficiently. And if you're training hard, stressed, or underslept, your demand for these nutrients goes up, even if your diet looks healthy. And I keep putting that in quotations because I'm going to explain what a comprehensive diet looks like here shortly. I can't tell you how many people come to me in my clinic telling me that they're eating super clean and eating right, and then we dive into it, I realize it's just a bunch of processed foods and convenient foods that are just disguised as healthy options. Normally, when you think about metabolism, you're thinking about weight loss and calories in, calories out. Calories in, calories out is a big portion of metabolism and weight loss, but not in the context that we're talking about right now. Right now, we're talking about cellular energy production, and that depends on having the raw materials to make ATP. Think of ATP as the energy currency that your body runs on. The next big thing I see a lot is oxygen underutilization, and this one is overlooked a lot. And if a lot of this seems technical for you, I'm just going over the concepts here. In the next bit, I'm going to go over the step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix this and what I mean. So back to oxygen utilization. Like I was saying, this one is massively overlooked. If you're not moving regularly, and if your breathing is shallow, if your posture is collapsed, your cells aren't getting the oxygen that they need. Oxygen is a critical ingredient in the process that turns glucose and fat into usable energy. No oxygen, no energy, it's that simple. And this is not something that needs to be deduced into absolute black and white, like, oh, I'm not getting oxygen, I'd be dead. That's not the concept here. Poor oxygen utilization leads to poor energy production. A sedentary lifestyle leads to poor oxygen utilization. Movement helps your body utilize oxygen properly. That's just the short-term effects. The long-term effects that sedentary lifestyles lead to is a decreased VO2 max, which will also worsen oxygen utilization. And this also ties to your brain as well. What most people don't think about is that your metabolism isn't just your body, it's also your brain. When you're not firing off properly, your brain literally gets less energy to work with. That's why you feel brain fog, irritability, forgetfulness, and you just feel moody and like crap. In fact, one of the strongest predictors for cognitive decline later in life is poor metabolic health. That's why I care so much about this, because when you fix your metabolism, you don't just get your energy back, which would be enough for any of you to do these steps, but you also get your clarity, 
your confidence, and your sense of control again. So I want to talk about why diet matters more than you think. And again, I respect your time, so I'm going to be moving through this quickly. The concept of this channel is to deliver you life-changing, amazing advice every week, if not more, in a concise manner. So supplements can help with these things, but food comes first. Your body is built to run on real nutrients, not synthetic replacements. And this is coming from someone who uses supplements themselves and with patients and clients. If your daily meals come from convenience foods, packaged snacks, processed foods, or energy drinks, you are fighting an uphill battle. Here's what a metabolically supportive diet looks like. Protein with every meal. This is eggs, grass-fed meat, wild-caught fish, or a solid plant-based alternative. Colorful vegetables, not just for your fiber, but for phytonutrients that drive cellular repair and energy. Healthy fats, olive oil, avocados, nuts, seeds. These are the foundations for hormones and brain function. Strategic use of carbs. Sweet potatoes, berries, quinoa. The goal isn't to fear carbs at all. I eat plenty of them, trust me. It's to time and source them intelligently. Hydration, so overlooked. Be drinking enough quality, clean water, please. On top of that, electrolytes. They can change your life, especially if you train, sweat, or work long hours under stress. I get my electrolytes and all my supplements from Fullscript. It's an online dispensary that physicians use that is trusted, third-party tested, and very quality. Quality with supplementation matters drastically. There are so many fakes on the market, it's not even funny. I use the electrolytes from Thorn. I just personally like them. I think they taste great. I'll drop the link to my full script dispensary in the top of the bio. There you can find top quality sourcing for electrolytes and any of the other supplementation that we mentioned. The point of all this is, is energy is expensive. If you're not fueling for it, your body will start rationing it. So let's talk about my daily routine. Here's what I actually do every day to keep my metabolism running clean and steady. In the morning, low carb, high protein breakfast. I cannot exaggerate enough how much of an improvement you will feel when you do this. This is eggs, avocados, greens, and I even usually add in some protein yogurt. I don't mean yogurt that's like fortified with protein. I mean things like Greek yogurt, etc. It will absolutely change your life. I'm telling you, do do not carb load early in the morning. This keeps your blood sugar stable. I love the eggs because it gives me a nice boost of acetylcholine. I also do 10 to 15 minutes outside within about 15 to 30 minutes of waking up. Sunlight resets and balances your circadian rhythm. This is your natural energy clock. You will feel tremendously better if you consistently do this every single day. And these aren't separate time frames. You can get your food and go eat it outside. I do it literally every morning. Then if I have time, a nice light walk, sunlight plus movement plus oxygen, it's wonderful. It's your system's boot up process. It's great. Again, we need to be realistic. Not everyone makes time to do this in the morning and that is okay. It's just something there that if you are just doing nothing and you're lounging around or you've got extra time, highly consider this. Not to exercise, not like a hard workout, just a nice gentle morning walk. You can give me five minutes and I'll be happy. Now, midday, I try to move every 60 to 90 minutes. This doesn't have to be a workout. I'm just saying you need to move. I talked about how a sedentary lifestyle can inhibit oxygen utilization. I don't have an incredibly sedentary job, so this is a little bit easier for me, but I don't care if you have to get up and walk to the water fountain and just stand there for a few minutes acting like you're doing something. It makes a difference. I also recommend three to five minutes of breathing. There are a lot of methods for this, many of which you can look up on YouTube. I'm not a breath expert, but there are plenty of them out there. But a very simple thing you can do, it's just three to five minutes of box breathing. You inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, and then hold for four again. Repeat that. This resets your nervous system and your oxygen delivery. Now, protein and vegetables for lunch. I want you to think clarity food for lunch, not comfort food. This is gonna stop that midday crash that you experience. We've already stopped it with an improved breakfast, Let's stop the next one with an improved lunch. Now in the evening, stop eating two to three hours before bed. Late meals can keep your body in digestion mode. Digestion uses a lot of energy. To put it simply, you don't wanna be diverting a ton of your energy to digestion while you're sleeping when your body would rather be using that energy to recover and repair. I also recommend screens off by 9 p.m. If you can't do that, blue light blocking glasses can help. Then magnesium glycinate or glycine before bed. This improves deep sleep and muscle repair. I don't supplement with glycine in like a capsule or a pill or anything like that. My favorite form is quality grass-fed collagen. Quality grass-fed collagen has very high glycine content. I'm telling you, Try this, your sleep will improve drastically. Now let's talk about training. Movement is your metabolic signal. It's not about just burning calories. It is about reminding your body what energy demand feels like. Of course, you're also gonna get great side effects, side effects of looking and feeling great. 
Here is the framework I use. Strength training three times a week. You can do more if you want. Compound lifts, progressive overload. This builds muscle and improves glucose partitioning. If you don't know what compound lifts and progressive overload are, I recommend just looking them up. Again, we're covering a ton of information in this video and I'm trying to respect your time and it would just be best if you went to a specific video on that. I also recommend cardio one to two times a week. There is a lot of nitty gritty about this. Zone two for endurance training or short sprints for efficiency. Those are all true and very productive. Here's what I say about cardio for the general person. Find something that you enjoy doing. I wasn't really built, I don't think, to hop on the Stairmaster two to three times a week or go for long runs or do hill sprints. We have amazing data behind the effectiveness and the health benefits of these things. But as someone who has recovered from repeated nervous system burnout and feeling awful and just pushing through these things, that isn't quite what works for me. It's not saying I don't do these things. I have a Peloton right here. It's great. But what I find that I enjoy with my cardio is to go play a sport. So if you enjoy tennis, go play tennis. If you enjoy soccer, go play soccer. For me, I go play pickleball. I absolutely love it. By the end of it, I am drenched in sweat. I have been in higher zones of cardio throughout most of it. It's excellent. I say this because oftentimes people can get themselves to the gym to lift and cardio seems to be the biggest issue, but there's so many amazing benefits from it. You're not meant to be a robot. Just find something that you love. I also want you to incorporate daily walking, seven to 10,000 steps a day. This aids in digestion, this supports lymphatic drainage, and this stabilizes blood sugar. I'm I'm telling you, if you can go for a 30 minute walk every single day, it will absolutely change your life. Movement is how your body learns that I need energy, I use energy, and I recover from energy. And I understand how you might feel hearing this because I have also watched many videos on workout plans and daily habits and things like that. But let me explain to you how this looks. If this movement routine sounds like too much, listen to this. Go to the gym and lift weights for 35 to 45 minutes. I'm telling you, it really doesn't take much longer than that for the average person. Big athletes and bodybuilders, yes, they're going to spend a lot more time in the gym. When you finish that, go ahead and go for a quick walk around the neighborhood or wherever it may be. Give me 20 to 30 minutes. So all in all, you're talking about like an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes of time. And that's just on your lifting days. That's three days a week. Okay. So the day after that, just go for a 20 to 30 minute walk. That's half the time. You will get into a routine of this that's very sustainable. The most important thing that I try to stress to patients and clients is that if you don't don't make time for movement. You will regret it later. I want you to take a deep, hard look at your daily routine and schedule and try to ink out time for this. Take a deep look at what things that you are consistently doing that are not moving you closer to alignment with your goals. Those are the things that you need to drop. We live in a society where we are almost robotic with the tasks that we have to complete. We will constantly continue to stack a bigger and bigger laundry list of things that we need to do. I can assure you as someone who, keep in mind, is a practicing doctor, has a thriving social media career, great relationships, and makes time to get in shape, this is very possible. And as someone who has been there, there are plenty of things that we are doing every single day that are not moving us closer to our goals, that are just tasks that we think that we need to do. Find these, identify these, and replace these with proper movement. Not making time to move now will ruin your life later. I know that sounds extreme, but I have seen it time and time again. Now, moving on to a less depressing standpoint on that. When you stack these habits, something very powerful happens. Your body starts regulating its energy without friction. Your brain runs smoother, your mood stabilizes, and you stop depending on caffeine as much. You start waking up without that mental fog. This happens because you've rebuilt the foundation. This system decides whether you're thriving or surviving. So here's my challenge. Try this for just a few days. Not perfectly, but be intentional with it. Eat high protein, low carb at breakfast. Get outside before 9 a.m. and move every 60 to 90 minutes. Shut screens down an hour before bed, or at least use blue blocking glasses. Track what changes, not just in energy, but in clarity, motivation, focus. It helps to reflect on these things that can help move you forward more. And you have to keep in mind that although this was an 
incredibly dense video. I tried to summarize it and condense it as much as possible, but I can only do so much in a YouTube video. If you want the full structure, the deep dive in how to rewire your brain, body, and metabolism to actually thrive and not just survive, that is what my book From Dull to Doctor is all about. This is the exact blueprint that I used to go from brain fog and fatigue to running multiple businesses, a thriving social media career, multiple master's degrees, a medical degree, thriving relationships, and being in great shape, and most importantly, actually feeling alive again. I'm not saying that to flex. I'm saying that because I wish someone would have come to me when I was going through this to give me a blueprint like this. That's actually why I wrote it. This is the exact step-by-step -step guide that I needed when I was going through this struggle. It's thorough, it's concise, and it's comprehensive. I'll drop the link in the top of the description for you. I highly recommend that you check it out. Of course, it's also in multiple formats, paperback, Audible, and Kindle. You were never meant to just get through the day. You were built to perform, to think clearly, to move with purpose, and to live with the energy that actually feels like yours again. If this hits home, comment the one change that you're going to commit to this week. If this resonated with you, drop a like and subscribe. It means the world and it helps the channel tremendously. It helps me keep being able to do this. And I drop more life-changing content like this every single week, sometimes twice a week. So be sure to turn on the notifications as well. And I know that you know someone that this video could help. Share this video with them. It's completely free and it's the least that you could do to help a loved one. This was a longer one, but I think it's a very good and comprehensive video for you. If you made it through this, I'm incredibly proud of you. And as always, I'm Dr. Matt Jones. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.